The KXAN News Podcast is sponsored by Shelf Genie. Too much rain in too little time sends first responders into waterlogged roads rescuing people. Looking at some of the work to keep people safe during last night's storms. A story straight out of a heist movie. The search for who took $20 million worth of gold from an airport in Canada. And sunshine is back after some really heavy rain in some areas last night. But how long will it last in your weekend forecast? Over four inches of rain fell in just one hour in North Austin last night, drenching the area. Now families could be spending a long time dealing with the damage. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. I'm Britt Moreno. And I'm Nabil Ramad. Now, Austin firefighters dealt with 50 plus water related calls, including several rescues. And in Travis County, ESD2, which serves Pflugerville, they had to pull 16 people from their cars stuck in water. KXN Sam Stark spoke with the department to learn more about those rescues and what should you do if you find yourself in the same situation. I think number one is, you know, stay off the roads when, when we see uh, risks of flash flooding and, and we had those alerts uh, coming out before this storm. Um, because unfortunately, you know, a lot of times it's hard to see water over the road until it's too late. There needs to be an awareness living in Central Texas um, that it can be hard to see water uh, over the road. So we need to be mindful of when we hear that uh, alert for flash flooding. Um, that we really just avoid driving. Say someone, um, you know, misses the alert and, and finds themselves out driving um, and, and they find themselves in water. Um, what what should they do in that situation? Call 911 um, and uh, work to make yourself visible. Um, so, you know, if you can get out of your vehicle onto the hood uh, of the car, um, that is helpful. It helps us be able to see you. Um, and be able to communicate with you. Uh, that's difficult for some people based on their physical status and, and how they're able to, to maneuver, so that's understandable. Uh, but we want, you wanna make yourself visible. This risk of flash flood is very real um, and needs to be taken seriously. And um, I think uh, with all the new people in the community, we just need to make sure they know about it. First warning weather with Chief Meteorologist David Yeomans. Well, fortunate to have a really quiet end to our work week today after such a crazy night last night. Here we are on the Buda Rock and Dirt Yard Cam with mostly sunny skies returning. Temperatures warm, but not as warm as yesterday with a little drop in humidity as well. 79 degrees there at the Rock and Dirt Yard. Look at the highest rain totals over the last 48 hours. We told you over four inches of rain fell in an hour. How about a grand total of 5.61 inches pouring into Walnut Creek, Brushy Creek, those have since receded. We also saw over four and a half inches of rain in Jollyville, Pflugerville, Wells Branch up in northern Travis County. We'll show you some more rain totals coming up in just a few. Also, out of the three tornado warnings in our area, we did get one confirmed tornado just south of Hayes County, not technically in our viewing area. Down near Canyon Lake, we had a weak EF0 with 85 mile an hour winds on the ground for three miles. Fortunately, nobody was injured, but we did have some roof damage and trees uprooted after 10 p.m. there. Coming up, we've got a cool dry night where we wake up tomorrow morning in the temperature department and when the clouds and rain return during your weekend plans. Thank you, David. Central Texas isn't the only city cleaning up after severe weather last night. Jay Gray shows us what other parts of the country are dealing with. Spring storms, this time targeting Texas. Reports of a tornado in Tyler, hail, high winds and heavy rain battering other areas, including Austin. Cars stalled in flash floodwaters there, drivers scrambling to escape. Yeah, it was a lot of panicky because the, the water was just, come, the rain was coming down, hail started, the water was flowing through each other's cars, they was bumping into each other, people was getting out of their cars swimming, so it was, it was pretty bad. Parts of Arkansas and Illinois also dealing with severe weather. While in Oklahoma, families are working to clean up after a string of tornadoes, the most severe in coal, where Scott and Deborah Curry, along with their four dogs, were penned inside their home as the twister moved through. I couldn't even get off the kitchen floor because I felt like if I stood up, I'd get, to get sucked out. I thought we were both going to get sucked out. Survivors pulling together and piecing together what they can from what the storms left behind. Jay Gray, NBC News. A sad update tonight. An Austin woman reported missing this past Sunday is found dead. Bell County deputies found 25-year-old Tierra Strand in a ditch just north of Temple. 
The family has been notified and an autopsy will be performed to determine the cause of death. She was last seen at a 6th Street bar. The Bell County Sheriff's Office is conducting a joint investigation with APD's homicide unit. The man who attacked a CAP Metro bus driver overnight is in jail this morning. This all happened on the corner of 5th Street and North Lamar just before 2 in the morning. Austin police say they heard about a disturbance on a bus and found a robbery victim there. CAP Metro saying the driver went to the hospital last night, but that driver has since been released. Going in depth on this, CAP Metro is working on creating its own police department. It expects to wrap up work on a temporary police headquarters later this year. That will be located on Cameron Road. CAP Metro wants to have 46 transit officers by 2027, and it wants to hire at least five of them starting this year. And the abortion pill Mifprestazone is available at least for now, but that could change by midnight. The Supreme Court gave itself until... Uh, then to weigh in on a decision issued by Texas-based U.S. District Judge. That judge moved to revoke the FDA approval for an abortion drug. Both the Justice Department and Danco Laboratories, which makes the brand version of Mifprestazone, Mifprefex, asked the court to immediately step in. The court could either decide to keep things the same for now or possibly restrict the drug. The Texas Department of Public Safety is investigating a fatal crash out of Odessa that ended with a speeding train slamming into a truck. Now the driver of the truck escaped moments before impact. It all happened Wednesday morning. Officials say the truck ended up stuck on the tracks after an accident with another car. The driver of that other car died in that wreck. Canadian police are trying to find the person or people who stole millions of dollars worth of gold and other high value goods from Toronto's airport. Police say the heist happened on Monday after someone took off with a high valued container from a holding cargo facility after it had been unloaded from a plane. Police would not say what airline was responsible for shipping the cargo or where the plane arrived from. The loot is worth 20 million in Canadian dollars, which is about 15 million American dollars. It's one of the biggest heist in Canadian history. What a story. Let's talk about a way to get money legally now. You could get a few million dollars this weekend. The Lotto Texas jackpot is the fourth largest in the history of the game. So if you win Saturday night's drawing, you can get an estimated $83 million. Now, if you get the cash value option, you end up with 50 million take home cash. Once taxes come out, it's more like 38 million, not a bad sum. But the good news is Texas winners don't pay a state tax on their winnings. And Austin Energy crews head to Arizona, bringing light to the homes of families who have gone without it for generations. And saving money and the earth. The clinic in Austin where you can learn repair skills to help you fix your household items rather than trash them. Well, soon many families in the Navajo Nation will be able to turn on their lights in their homes for the first time. That's thanks to a partnership between utilities like Austin Energy and the Navajo Tribal Utility Authority. Austin Energy line work crews met for a debriefing this morning before leaving for Arizona. This isn't the first time Austin Energy has sent crews for this purpose. Last year, eight Austin Energy staff and utility workers from nine other states traveled to Arizona to connect the homes of Navajo families to the electric grid. We went to a place where people have never had lights. Some people have never had power in their homes for generations. And so to get to get lights on to people who have never had it and to see the appreciation they had was pretty humbling. So cool to see those crews from Austin. 11 crew members and 10 Austin Energy trucks hit the road for the 1,000 mile trip this morning. They'll be there for two weeks. Well, in honor of Earth Day coming up tomorrow, we wanted to tell you about a program right here in Austin that can teach you how to repair your broken household items. It's called the Fix It Clinic, and it's been around since 2015. So instead of spending money to replace things like a broken toaster or a blender or maybe a piece of clothing, stuff we all have, you can bring those items in and skilled volunteers can teach you how to make repairs. Our hope is once people come to a fix it clinic, they kind of have the confidence to next time, you know, something breaks at home to take it apart themselves, or maybe they remember that, you know, sewing skill that they've learned and they can use that to, to keep their next item out of the landfill. Well, it is all part of helping the city meet its zero waste goal, which aims to divert 90% of all material generated away from landfills by 2040. 
As schools take matters into their own hands, we'll tell you the steps state lawmakers are taking to keep young Texans safe in the classroom. And not only some heavy rain last night in North Austin, but also elsewhere. Parts of the Hill Country, like Gillespie County, getting nearly three inches of rain, putting a little flow back into the Pertinalis. Lake Travis, though, only up an inch, unfortunately, and that's all. East of I-35, some totals over three inches near Smithville and LaGrange. Your first warning forecast for the weekend when we come back. This KXAN News podcast is brought to you by Shelf Genie. I'm Rosie Newberry from KXAN Studio 512. Considering replacing your kitchen cabinets? Struggling to find or reach things? Go to ShelfGenie.com slash Austin. Shelf Genie designs custom pull-out shelves for your existing cabinets, adding convenience and value to the most used room in your home. Shelf Genie custom pull-out shelves, everything in reach. State lawmakers are preparing to vote Monday to take steps to make schools safer. It's legislative priority this year. And it comes as some schools across Texas have been taking matters into their own hands. Our Monica Madden introduces us to a solution from the private sector. You can't shoot through either way. It's glass designed to slow down an attacker. We're going to shoot through it because it is not designed to stop bullets. It's designed to stop people from entering. Mike Lanky showed Texas school administrators his company's entry and bullet resistant products. We'll shoot it a couple times. For situations like the Nashville school shooting, Lanky believes that their product could have saved lives. How much time do you think they're going to spend trying to get through this before somebody arrives? It's not the only solution. We have uh, several plans that are coming together. Senate Education Chair Brandon Creighton says making Texas schools safer has to be a multi-layered approach. Some of the TEA guidelines are uh, not mandates. I think school districts should have the flexibility to decide what's best for them. On Wednesday, senators unanimously passed a bill that would allow the TEA to compel districts to have active shooter plans or punish them if they don't. The House's overhaul school safety bill is set for debate Monday. House Bill 3 calls for armed school employees on every campus, requires strict safety audits of every school, and penalties for districts that fail to comply with new safety standards. Meanwhile, high school students in Central Texas walking out Friday asking for more safety infrastructure and anything else to protect them. Monica Madden, KXAN News. And Lakey says their windows are cheaper than bulletproof glass due to the material they use for the product. The companies don't have an exact cost estimate for schools just yet since it depends on the order and of course the size of the campus. Now going in depth looking at school active shooter policies in 2020 Texas State released the results of a three year audit of over a thousand Texas school districts of those just 200 had active shooter policies that allowed best practices about half of the state's district 620 26 did not have active shooter plans at all. Another 196 had active shooter policies with negligible guidance, like having someone call 911 as their plan, according to the audit. The CDC announced today the COVID-19 vaccine schedule has been reduced to a single dose. Those who are unvaccinated will only need to go get one bivalent vaccine instead of two monovalent vaccines. Multiple doses will still continue to be recommended for young children, as well as seniors and those who are immunocompromised. An Austin Travis County health official said in a statement, being able to get the protection you need with just one stop at a doctor's office or pharmacy will save many people time and effort that can be hard to spare with busy schedules. First warning weather with Chief Meteorologist David Yeomans. Well, a much more relaxing weather day outside. Drop in temperatures, a little drop in humidity. Still a warm afternoon, but nice to see the sunshine here on the Austonian weather cam. Looking northward, it is 81 degrees right now in the city. A little cooler most everywhere else. 77 in Dripping Springs and in Bastrop. 79 where we had some big storms last night in San Marcos. Mold and grass are through the roof. This is a byproduct of both the rain last night and the dry, breezy weather today. Oak is up in the medium count. And just to be sure everybody feels a little bit of allergies, we've got a total of six different allergens floating around. There goes yesterday's storm system, which brought some storms to Houston this morning. It's now way out past the oil platforms in the central Gulf of Mexico. What we're enjoying right now is a brief break of clear skies, but I do say brief for a reason. The jet stream is oriented just like this, driving repeated storm system after storm system into Texas, not only this weekend again, but really through the next six or seven days on and off. So tomorrow, let me help you out with your plans. I think if you're going to the lake, doing something else outside, 
First half of your Saturday is the best time we'll see all weekend. Starting you off tomorrow at Lake Travis, 61 degrees at 9 a.m. Some sunshine early, but you will notice clouds increasing late by 4 p.m. Temperatures wonderful at 79, but look at the dark clouds and possibly thunderstorms brewing out to the west. I'll give you a better idea of when the clouds increase for you. Here we are right now under sunshine, clear skies, and nice cool temperatures in the 40s and 50s tonight. But tomorrow, watch this. After 7 a.m., we've got a beautiful first half of the day, just a couple scattered clouds by lunchtime. But during the afternoon, things start to change. First of all, clouds increase everywhere by 3 or 4 p.m. Second of all, this is some brand new model data that actually has me increasing your Saturday evening chance of rain up to 30 percent now. And it may even have to go higher. Watch what I'm talking about. In the hill country, a couple strong storms may enter after 4 p.m. If we see some strong looking storms like this, this could be bad news for your Saturday evening plans. These new models even want to bring them into Austin and have a mean little shape on them by 7, 8 p.m. tomorrow. After this initial storm threat Saturday evening, the atmosphere takes a break into Sunday morning. But with a cold front and storm system in the area on Sunday, look at this, a cloudy day with periods of on and off rain and a few thunderstorms likely. Hopefully the rain on Sunday is just more beneficial as opposed to being severe. And that's not the only rain we've got. Over the next seven days, when you add up all these daily storm chances here and there, we're hoping for another one to two inches for everyone. Maybe some isolated higher totals uh, that could be certainly higher than that. As of right now, tomorrow evening's severe storm threat is quite low, but we'll let you know if this changes from our friends at the Storm Prediction Center. Right now, it's just a one out of five Saturday evening in the Hill Country, a one out of five threat again on Sunday for our southern tier of counties. Again, these can change day to day and even hour to hour. We'll get an update to these maps overnight tonight, then pass that along to you. Okay, tonight, clear and cool with a light east wind, feeling great by morning at 55. Get outside early tomorrow because late, a few isolated storms move in, as you saw there, 79 degrees on a comfortable day otherwise. After that, the cold front from the storm system moves in. We've got a higher chance of rain and much cooler highs of only 63. Enjoy that while it lasts here as we get toward late April on Sunday. Next week, look at those 50% chances of rain every single day through yeah. Wednesday. A cold front bumps temperatures down on Thursday with sunshine and dry weather seven days from now. Looks more like Seattle. Thanks, David. Coming up, a family speaking out and seeking change. The TikTok challenge that ended with a 13-year-old child dying. Well, the family of an Ohio teen is warning other parents about the deadly TikTok challenge that took the life of their 13 year old. Jacob Stevens died after overdosing on Benadryl. The TikTok challenge called for people to take 12 to 14 pills in order to hallucinate. Now his family is advocating for sweeping changes to the access of over the counter medications. Put age limits on it. Uh, it's the same thing with the Benadryl. Maybe we need to put a, a lot, a, a, you know, an age group that they cannot buy aspirin, they can't buy Benadryl, they can't. It's not just TikTok, it's anything that's out there that can damage these children's lives. TikTok has since removed all videos relating to the challenge and is now offering resources for substance abuse. In an effort to create food in a sustainable way, companies are cultivating real meat in labs. More than 150 companies are working to make lab-grown meat and seafood a reality. Upside Food is one of only two companies in the U.S. that's received clearance from the FDA to do this. Talk to me about the science here. How does it work? The science is fascinating, but it's fairly simple. Everything we eat is made of cells. Our idea is because meat is cells from animals, what if we can just grow the best types of cells? So we take cells from eggs or young animals or mature animals, and we identify the cells that are capable of going into uh, fats, proteins, connective tissue. Ahead on NBC Nightly News, when you might start seeing their chicken at local grocery stores. Well, tonight on KXAN, it's Lopez versus Lopez at 7, Grand Crew at 7.30, Dateline NBC at 8 before KXAN News is back at 10. Or you can join us an hour earlier for KXAN News at 9 on the CW Austin. Here's where to find us over the air or through your television provider. Thanks for listening to KXAN News Nightly. You can also listen to KXAN News Today every morning for more in-depth coverage of what matters most to you.